It's a three-dimensional whole, and one of one of my gripes that I have sometimes with how these sorts of things are portrayed in movies and stuff is they tend to think of it as like a, a circle, and then you sort of fall in and you go somewhere. But where it, it's more of a sphere, you can approach it from many different directions. So the other side is sort of a weird thing to think about because it isn't, you don't mean, I think, the other side so much as you mean the other place it may go to. So, Pete, how welcome are you? to the show. Yes, I'm very well. Every I, week, I'm the same. Really, yeah, I know. I yeah. should, I should start differently. Yeah. Okay, I'll start differently. Okay, so how sure. are your eyes? My eyes, um, just like the year 2020. Whoa, ladies right? and gentlemen, Peter Smeechin <laughs> dropping the comedy. I, I would say, unfortunately, that my eyes are also like the year 2020, getting worse. It seems every month, as you, as people at home can tell, I do, I do wear glasses. Right. I'm nearsighted. You can see very well, and always have been able to, right? I can see a lot of things. I am. Uh, I can see everything far away. Yeah. I can see through a lot of things, yeah. like uh, your uh, cheesy openings. But one thing I can't. <laughs> yeah. One thing I can't see through. Yes. What do you think? Black hole. Exactly. Well, I mean, by definition, very difficult to see through, right? Uh, black. They're, they're, they're large. They're, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a massive, well, a massive mass that really, I think only theoretically people believe we could see through. But again, all due respect to you, all due respect to me. We're not the people who are going to be able to answer that question. So that's why we have experts on the show. And today we do have an expert from the University of Southern California, a professor from the physics and astronomy department. You know him, you love him. He's a friend of the show. Professor Clifford Johnson. Welcome back. Welcome back to What If Discussed. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good. Well, we're good. We're, we're kind of debating. Uh, well, I, I don't know if we're debating, but we're trying to, to figure you, out. You'd know if I was debating. Could you see through a black hole? And obviously this is theoretical. So, you know, this is, this is the time to be a theoretical physicist. Let's start with Ken. What would you see if you looked into a black hole? Uh, that's a great question. So, well, to a first approximation in my, you know, physicist way of saying things, uh, you wouldn't see anything coming from the inside because in some ways, by definition, at least in classical physics, the black hole is not letting anything escape from it. Now, one of the things people think about a lot in recent times has been black holes say at the when you combine them with quantum physics because when quantum physics is included there is some sort of mechanism which goes back to stephen hawking who you may have heard of right who said uh, and showed that when you combine quantum physics with black holes there's a sense in which they radiate stuff out and there's a way of thinking about it that means that in some sense the stuff is coming out uh, energy is coming out from the black hole. It's losing energy. Now, one perspective says it's just some quantum stuff happening near the horizon and it comes out and it isn't really coming from the inside. But another perspective says that in some sense, it is telling you stuff about the inside of a black hole. So people are very excited about trying to understand the full quantum story of a black hole because it tells you essentially about the fate of the black hole, the fate of what fell in ultimately. That stuff all has to come out in this process by which the black hole evaporates, if that is a, if that is a real thing. Now I should say that um, uh, you know, black holes that we see in astrophysics made from collapsed stars or even larger, uh, their, their, their evaporation time uh, and the evaporation effects of the quantum physics are essentially negligible. They, they, it would take so long to lose any significant amount of energy that you'd wait longer than the lifetime of the universe. So this is very much in the realm of what if in the theoretical physics world, where you're thinking about the fate of perhaps small black holes if they were to be discovered. 
I love that you use the term what if. It's very, yes. very rare that snuck we get a guest. Stuck in a plug. It's the show. What if? So that kind of covers what we would see, uh, what might be in a black hole and what might be emanating from a black hole. Uh, but if we take this visionary theoretical journey uh, right to its conclusion, what would we see on the other side of a black hole? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. Uh, part, of the, part of the question would then be, I, I would have to go, well, what do you mean by the other side? Uh, if you think of it as... Is there another side? Yes. It's a three-dimensional hole, right? And one of, one of my gripes that I have sometimes with how this is, these sorts of things are portrayed in movies and stuff uh, is... They they tend to they tend to they tend to think of it as like a, a circle, and then you sort of fall in and you go somewhere. But where it's it's more of a it's more of a sphere. You can approach it from many different directions, and you'd go in. So the other side is sort of a weird thing to think about because it isn't. You don't mean I think the other side so much as you mean the other place it may go to. Mm, and yeah. So you can imagine that there's another spherical object somewhere else which is like the other end of that hole and you would then emerge from out coming out of that and that would be like the exit does that make sense oh wow like a wormhole type thing well uh, that you know those are among the things that people have uh speculated about and you can find uh, uh solutions of the equations of relativity which is where we study black holes that that um that give you those scenarios but the 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 plumbing is is higher dimensional than we normally think of right you think for example of a uh, of a of, of like a garden hose right it has one end and that's essentially a circle a disc that you go into and then you come out the other end instead you would have a whole sphere which is which is like a higher dimensional circle and then you come out the a, a sphere somewhere else if you were to engineer a wormhole as far as we know, that's um, that's uh, that's fraught with uh, physics difficulty. Real stable <laughs> wormholes are not thought to be possible, as far as we understand. But it's fun to think about them, and of course, we use them in science fiction a lot. Yeah, and and Einstein left the door open for that, didn't he? Well, he not only left the door open, he 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 he, he helped discover the door. Right, the the original wormhole uh, solution. Um, was was discovered by Einstein and uh, and Rosen, uh, and there was a paper where uh, they actually pointed out that you could, by examining the geometry of the of the standard black hole solution that's used to study real astrophysical black holes, you can actually see that it contains the possibility of indeed going what seems to be into the black hole, and then coming out another side and it's like you're and you're at like exiting from a different black hole or it's the same black hole up to you how you think about it and that was the wormhole solution otherwise known as the einstein rosen bridge a uh, bridge between two different sort of regions but as they already observed uh you'd have to do things like move faster than the speed of light to 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 traverse that wormhole um, before it collapsed. Few few nuts to crack. <laughs> they tend to collapse before you can uh, do anything with them. If, if anybody's seen the uh, the opening or seen the show Raised by Wolves uh, on HBO Max, I believe, but the opening has them essentially doing exactly what you just described, going through, popping out another sphere. Uh, we're checking out, you can watch, I believe it's that just the opening is on YouTube. It's worth checking out. It's kind of a, an illustrative vision of that theoretical idea. Um, theoretical being sort of the key word when we're talking about big what ifs, especially something like black holes and looking through them. But is it possible that these things will be a little less theoretical, uh, theoretical and a little more concrete as we develop new technology, I, I know that there's the the Event Horizon Telescope and the Virgo Cluster. You know, there's other bigger telescopes. Do you anticipate we're going to be able to learn a lot more from these these new eyes on these black holes? Well, well um, uh, the Event Horizon Telescope is 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 a wonderful example, as you say, of what you can do with new technology and it's in some ways it's new technology combined with old technology in the following sense 
What the Event Horizon Telescope is, it's actually a network of existing telescopes and new ones being built will be added. It's a network of telescopes all around the Earth that you connect together by, uh, so you're getting them all to look in the same direction at the same object. And so that essentially gives you one massive telescope the size of the Earth which is what you need in order to see something very far away in great detail. And uh, the technological aspect there is that you need to somehow combine all that information from all those different telescopes in the right way uh, with amazing computer technology, amazing collaboration by hundreds of scientists. Uh, and they collaborate in order to combine these data using modern algorithms and super fast computers to do that and then essentially turns it into one giant telescope. So indeed, the, the landmark thing that uh, you probably all saw in the news, um, what was it, last year? I think it was last year, right? That, that first image of the black hole event horizon, which I remind you, because people often miss this fact, it's the first time we're seeing in any extended sense of the word seeing, a black hole, or at least the event horizon, the shadow of the black hole against the stuff that's glowing around it. Every other image you've ever seen depicting a black hole has been an artist's impression. Hmm. It's easy wow. to forget that yeah. because, you know, you see these wonderful artist impressions of matter coming off one star and falling into a black hole. It looks super realistic. An artist did that. Um, except in this case, this really is real data turned into what it would look like. And so um, we're going to learn a lot more about black holes that way. And um, I think, uh, uh, you know, whether or not the business of whether you can see into it and see out the other side or what have you, um, which, is, which is probably going to remain speculative in, in some sense, uh, we're going to learn a lot about the black holes themselves. And, and, uh, what how they how they uh dominate the physics in the core of our galaxy how they interact with the stuff there how they uh different how different galaxies black holes are different from each other as we start imaging other black holes it's it's going to be huge uh the, the amount of stuff we're going to learn from that and it is awesome that we're really looking at the shadow of a black hole uh, with our own eyes uh, for the first time in our history, in our civilization's history. Spectacular. Super cool. Uh, Crazy times. Professor, thanks very much for taking us through this speculative vision quest. Uh, where can people go to find your work? Well, um, it's probably easiest to find me on either Instagram or Twitter uh, or Facebook by just, well, just Google my name and physics, Clifford Johnson Physics. That's the easiest way rather than trying to figure out what yeah, my Yeah, and that's, I, I, I would also... Sorry, go. I was just going to say that's what I did, and it brought me down the whole Clifford Johnson rabbit hole too. So I would, it, to your point, it's the best place to start. Clifford Johnson Physics, maybe USC as well. Yeah, and you'll find uh, you'll find, uh, uh, like I said, uh, lots of lots of uh, thoughts, discussions on my blog, um, images I share of uh, physics ideas or other things, um, uh, other activities I get up to. And you'll find your way maybe also to my nonfiction graphic book about um, the nature of the universe, uh, which I wrote and drew a couple of years ago, published by MIT Press. There's a lot of ideas in there about space and time and quantum physics, a little bit about black holes and how you can use them as time machines, for example, and things like that. Thank you, Professor Johnson. Uh, in quantum physics, there's something called the observer effect, which is very interesting in that literally what you see and what I see of the same thing might be different. Ooh. So when you apply it to especially things as theoretical as black holes, when we're asking, well, what would you see if you saw through a black hole? Well, of course, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as they say. Who knows what you're going to see? But at least when you talk to somebody like Professor Johnson, you at least get a better guidance system on what you'd be looking for. Because here I'm asking that question in a two dimensional sense. And I hadn't even thought that, of course, that's idiotic. Yeah, they say there's no dumb questions, but maybe that was <laughs> yes. a dumb question. Yeah, no, I always thought, too, that uh, yeah. black hole is just, a, you know, it's a hole. 
Yes. And you fall into it. Idiotic. Not realizing it's <laughs> spherical or <laughs> it's three-dimensional. It's spherical, yes. Of course, it's not a black hole. It's a black orb. Yes, exactly. Really? And he yeah. sort of helped us understand that and helped us understand a few other things. Right. Well, we'll be seeing more black holes not coming up anytime soon, but uh, as our technology gets uh, stronger, as we send uh, Hubble or uh, Webb telescopes into space and get a better look and usher in basically a new era of space exploration. Uh, and we'll also explore a little bit more with uh, Professor Johnson on the extended audio podcast. Now, if you're watching us, us and you want to hear more, well, just click on the link below and you can join the extended audio podcast. If you are already listening to the audio podcast, don't worry. There's nothing to click on. Just keep listening. We'll be with you in just a second. Now, uh, if you are watching on video and you're leaving us, well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on another What If Discussed. <laughs>